Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at roots of quadratic equations, specifically ones that have complex roots in them, so we can answer questions from exercise 1e. So let's just remind ourselves of quadratic roots and, and what happens when we solve a quadratic equation. If we have something like this, x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0, then we can solve this by factorising one of three different ways in which we can solve quadratic equations, and then x plus 5, x plus 2. So we know therefore that then our solutions are x minus 5 and x, sorry, x equals minus 5 and x equals minus 2. The roots of the quadratic are minus 2 and minus 5. So let's work our way backwards through this, because what we're going to be given is questions where we know the roots and then we're asked to work out what the equation is. So if we know, for example, here in a different polynomial, a different quadratic, that the roots here are minus 4 and 3, then we can effectively work our way back up through this method that we've got above. So if our roots are minus 4 and 3, then how would we put that back into some brackets? Well, we'd need to have x plus 4 being in the bracket. Now, why is it plus 4 inside the bracket? Because when x equals minus 4, we get the root. So x plus 4 needs to be inside the brackets. But when 3 is a root, we need x minus 3 inside the bracket so that then x equals 3 becomes a root. So it's always the negative that's going to go inside the bracket with the x value. And then we can expand the brackets here and that will give us the equation that we need um, for the roots that we were given at the start of the question. And it's these types of questions, but with complex numbers, that we're going to be asked in this, uh, in this chapter. Now, in this question here, we're asked to find the quadratic equation that has the roots of 3 plus 5i and 3 minus 5i. Now, you can notice here, to start with, these two roots here are complex conjugates of each other, and when the roots are complex conjugates of each other, we're going to get a quadratic equation that doesn't have any i's in it at all. It's all real coefficients, and you'll see why that is in a bit. Now, when we're asked to find the quadratic equation um, where we've got two roots, all we have to do is set up a couple of brackets where it's x minus the first root uh, times by x minus the second root. So let's go ahead and do that in this question here then. So x minus the first root and x minus the second root. Now, be careful here to put the root in brackets because it's actually subtracting both of the parts, the real and imaginary parts. So you can effectively expand the brackets so it looks now like this. And all that's left for you to do then is expand the brackets. Be really careful here. You should get um, nine components that come out of this expansion, x times x, x times minus 3, and x times 5i, then it's minus 3 times x, minus 3 times minus 3, minus 3 times 5i, and minus 5i times x, minus 5i times minus 3, and minus 5i times positive 5i. And you'll see here that lots will cancel, so we'll have plus 5ix and minus 5ix, we'll have minus 15i and positive 15i, and the i squared here will simplify to minus 1. So we can simplify this now to x squared minus 6x plus 34 equals 0. And this here is the quadratic that will give us these two roots if we solve this quadratic. Now, as I said before, what's quite helpful here is that these two are complex conjugates and these will always give you a quadratic with real coefficients. Now another way that you could do this question here that I've seen my students previously show me is by a reverse completing the square method. So if you remember completing the square you need um, x minus or plus some number inside a bracket with a square and then it's plus or minus something on the outside and you then do a little bit of algebraic rearrangement until you end up at an answer where it's x equals some number plus or minus another number, and in this case here, it's x equals 3 plus or minus 5i. Now, in the reverse order of completing the square, we would take away 3 onto the other side, 
we then square both sides. Um, now you can see here we've got plus 5i that needs to be squared and we've got minus 5i that needs to be squared as well. And in both cases it's going to give us a minus 25. In the first case, because 5 squared is 25, i squared is minus 1. And in the second case, minus 5 squared is 25, i squared is minus 1. And you times both together to get minus 25. So in both of the cases where this number here is squared, we get minus 25. And then it's just a bit of expanding the left-hand side and adding 25 onto the other side to get uh, your final answer. And you can see here that they're both the same. This method down below is quite neat, actually. and It doesn't require nine expanding bracket parts um, and then simplifying all of those. So, so maybe this probably is my preferred method of doing this type of question. All right then, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here now. Pause the video and have a go at these questions from exercise 1e. All right then, let's have a go at question three then. It's one that we've just done in the video here. So given that two plus three i is a root of a quadratic equation with real coefficients, write down the other complex root. Well, the other complex roots, given that the two complex roots need to be complex conjugates of each other, is two minus three i. That is the other root of this uh, quadratic equation here. And then part B is find the quadratic equation. Well, in this case here, I'm going to do it by the reverse completing the square method. So it's 2 plus or minus 3i. So now let's subtract the 2 onto the other side. Square both sides. Z minus 2 squared equals minus 9. And then add the 9 onto the side after you've expanded your brackets. Plus the 9. So in this case here, it's going to be z squared minus 4z plus 13 equals 0. So in this case here, b is minus 4 and c is 13. Okay, so there we are. That's the answer to question 3 here. Question 8 gives us z equals 5 over 3 minus i, given that z is a root of a quadratic x squared plus p x plus q equals zero, find the values of p and q. Well, there's not much for us to do here apart from rationalize this denominator here. So it's going to be 5 over 3 minus i, but that's a bit of a rubbish number to start a question with. We're going to have to first rationalize that denominator or um, divide these two complex numbers by each other. And the way we do that is we times by the complex conjugate on the top and the bottom. So it's going to be uh, 15 plus 5i on the top. And it's going to be 9 minus 3i plus 3i plus 1. So this is going to be 15 uh, plus 5i over 10. So in this case here it's going to be 3 over 2 plus half i. So this is one of the roots of the quadratic. The second root is going to be 3 over 2 minus a half i. So now all that's left for us to do is to find the quadratic. So it's going to be, well it's in terms of x, so let's use x equals 3 over 2 plus or minus half i. I. Um, what would probably be a good idea to do here is to times everything through by 2. So 2x equals 3 plus or minus i. Let's um, take the 3 onto the other side and square all, all in one go. And then expand the brackets. So it's 4x squared minus that will give me a minus 6x times 2 will give me minus 12x plus the 9 plus the other 1 coming over from the other side. So it's going to be 4x squared minus 12x plus 10 equals 0. 
they're all um, factors of so we need to we need to make it x squared so let's divide through by 4 so it's going to be x squared minus 3x plus uh, 2.5 equals 0 so there we are so that's the answer to question 8 of exercise 1e so it's your turn now to have a bit of practice at this. We're going to be moving on to cubics and quartics uh, in the next video. So make sure you've had plenty of practice on quadratics because we're only going to be building on that in the next video. All right then, thanks very much for watching.